Roblox has thousands of games. You could play anything you can possibly imagine on this platform all for free. Roblox has done nothing but evolve over the past 14 years it's been running and it's showing no signs of stopping. Recently, I think while the engine itself has gotten increasingly better, the games have dropped harshly in substance. You can make Sonic Speed Simulator as flashy as you want, but it's still a game where you walk. I mean, there are definitely some incredible games that have come out over the past few years, right? Dragon Adventures, Adopt Me, Arsenal, Tower Defense Simulator, and more are all a total jam to play. But to me, I've always had a standard for what I think a Roblox game should be. In my eyes, and what I've grown to adore about Roblox so much, is the indie vibe that all of my favorite games have. I mean, just look at the lobbies for some of these older games. These impressive buildings that just look so cool on the inside and out. Honestly, a lot of these newer Roblox games just don't feel like passion projects anymore. They feel like something a AAA studio would put out, and they have the numbers to back that statement up. Some of them do still capture that magic that 2014 to 2016 Roblox had, but many of them miss the mark. Whether they be an obvious cash grab, fake, or otherwise dumbed down to the point of non-recognition. But, no matter what new games come out, or what old games get updated, I always come back to one specific developer who created some of the most wacky, wild, fast-paced, and fantastic games Roblox has ever seen. This specific developer just had a style that clicked with me back then. The way his games flowed, the pacing of them, and the balancing just seemed far superior to any other game at the time. To the point where these games were really the only ones I played. So what makes this developer so special? What about his games just hit different compared to games now? And what is the legacy of Lawlerus? Lemonis Mileska, better known as Lollaris, is a Lithuanian Roblox developer who is behind the group known as Mad Studio. You might have heard of some of his games, i.e. the Mad Murderer, Mad Paintball, and Mad Games. These are his most famous games to date, and the main three that we're going to be talking about in this video. All of these games were featured on the front page of Roblox at one point or another, and at the time, their player count in the mid-thousands blew basically every other game out of the water. The most notorious of which being Mad Games, but we'll get into that later. As a heads up, I'm going to be going over these games in order from oldest to newest, talking about their history, their shortcomings, and their successes. So, without further ado, let's dive in. The Mad Murderer is one of the most legendary and polarizing games on Roblox, with over 69 million visits. TMM single-handedly uprooted the front page of Roblox for some time. It introduced many interesting mechanics that the genre really hasn't experienced before. You see, murder mystery type games came in about late 2012-2013 when Gmod was experiencing a boom in them. Another developer by the name of Nicholas created the original murder mystery game, which came out the same year as The Mad Murderer, exploding in popularity itself. Lolaris was one person who saw the success of murder mystery and started taking notes. Nicholas was taking a somewhat new and basic formula to the Roblox platform and making a fortune off of it. However, the original murder mystery was far from perfect, introducing a whole host of flaws in its design that made a lot of players angry. Janky knife physics, lack of variety in gameplay, and other balancing nightmares made murder mystery just an okay game instead of a monumental one. But that didn't stop the game from popping off, garnering well over 8 million visits in its first week. Lollaris wanted to capture that essence and make his own spin on the game. And so, on April 7th, 2014, The Mad Murderer came out. We're back with a new murder game from Mad Studio. You probably know by now that Roblox players have gone crazy over murder games. Well, it's true. TMM would rocket to the top of the charts on Roblox's front page, far surpassing Murder Mystery and another murder game created by Clone Trooper 1019. However, considering the release date being so close to that of Murder Mysteries and the current Roblox climate at the time, Lawlerus would be on the receiving end of widespread criticism of his game. Developers, including those of Nicholas and Clone Trooper, would rag on Lawlerus in advertisement, calling his game unoriginal, copied, and otherwise underperforming. But that didn't stop the Roblox player base from eating this game up, myself included. 
The Mad Murderer did take many ideas from previous iterations, including the idea of disguises. The thought process was, well, no one can team if no one knows who anyone is. This idea was a simple yet brilliant solution to the problem of teaming that more recent games like Murder Mystery 2 have in common. By locking players into certain outfits and names, nobody could really tell who was who, unless they were in a call, but come on, let's get serious. This is 2014. However, Lullerus didn't just rip off other versions of the murder mystery genre, he improved them. Remember those bugs from the original murder mystery? Well, not anymore. Lollerus created an entirely new knife and gun script that was more snappy and responsive than older titles. The characters themselves were no longer just letters of the native phonetic alphabet, but actual characters, some of which being modeled off of other famous developers. Abilities were introduced that allowed your knife to be a hitscan laser, a ghost knife that penetrated victims, and even one that allowed to be spam thrown. Lollerus also created a plugin called Chat Voice, an ancient attempt at a version of voice chat that saw a sound effect being played when a message was typed. Adopters of this technology included Shedletsky, who, if you didn't see my previous Roblox Legacy video, go check that one out. This shows you just how influential Lolaris was in the Roblox developer space. Another feature that Lolaris created was the Radio Game Pass, which allowed users to play music that everyone in the lobby could hear. All of these features combined to make The Mad Murderer a fast-paced, action-packed game that never slowed down. Games were fast and allowed those with power to really pull off some ludicrous stuff. And even though this game is locked forever, it's still a shining example of what a Roblox game really could be. Some didn't like it, for it had vulnerabilities specifically in regards to exploits. Exploiters could get players free items or make the cost of item and game passes free themselves. This ended up being one of the Mad Murderer's downfalls, and what led to its eventual closing. But we can all remember that golden era where this game was the game to play on Roblox. The next game, while not as impactful as the first, was still a complete blast. Mad Paintball, a take on the once popular paintball genre on Roblox. This game would see the return of the characters we'd all come to love in The Mad Murderer. However, this time, they would merge the ideas of characters with specific playstyles. Some characters would be snipers, some would be shotguns, and others still would be assault rifles and miniguns. Mad Paintball was very similar to other paintball games, but it stood out for its map design. And while Turbine was ripped directly from Teen Fortress 2, which was a common theme amongst Mad Studio games, other maps really stood out for their creativity. It really brought that mad energy that the original Mad Murderer did to the table. The gunplay was just as snappy as the knife and gunplay in TMM, and the diversity of characters really made each match unique. While there were technically only four classes, being the ones I had mentioned previously, each character in that class was slightly changed. For example, Harry and Flynn were both snipers. However, while Harry had faster move speed and lower damage, Flynn had slower move speed and hit like a freight train. This variety persisted through all of Mad Paintball's life and really set it apart from others of the genre. Again, this is just another example of Lollaris going the extra mile when it comes to the polish on his games. And while I don't have much more to say about this game, other than it was marginally less popular than The Mad Murder, it's still a total blast. In fact, I probably played Mad Paintball more than I played The Mad Murder. It's a shame that it's just kind of been lost to time. And finally, we have Mad Games. And boy, oh boy, is this a doozy. Mad Games is a minigame style game similar to that of Epic Minigames and Ripple Minigames. These kind of games were very popular around 2014 to 2016. But Mad Games took it a step further, taking the fast-paced action of the Mad Murderer and applying it to a genre that, in my opinion, was far better suited for it than that of TMM. Mad Games was by far the most off-the-wall games Walrus has ever put out. There are more abilities, effects, skins, game passes, game modes, and basically any other game mechanic out there than any other Roblox game at the time. It's insane to see us so much packed into such a small place, but this is where we stop and we realize that this is still an indie game made by a small team of people. You could see the effort and the passion oozing out of every crack of this game. There's a version of Spleef, there's a balloon popping minigame, Minesweeper, giant cat boss battles, and more. There's a game mode where everyone is dropped into a metal crate and given guns. The name of the game mode is The Box. Jokes aside, however, this game still made a huge impact on me. 
Me and my friends would play this game all the time after school, and it was a total madhouse. I've put more hours into this silly little Roblox game than I have put into basically any other game I've played, and that's saying something. The amount of stuff in this game, coupled with the snappy controls that have persisted throughout every Mad Studio game, insane abilities and effects, and a real sense of passion, made Mad Games one of the best games Roblox has ever seen. So, that begs the question, if these games are so good, where are they now? Why are they sitting at a stable 0 to 5 players? Is there anything we can do to revive these games, or are they just simply a product of time, aging and wasting away until there's nothing left? Well, I have some words of hope for all you Mad Studio fans. Lalaris claims that he's rehashing the Mad Murder, and I'm not talking about Murder Mystery X. Someday, maybe we might get another taste of what Lalaris is really capable. A return to form, if you will. That drive, that passion that was so instrumental to his success in the earlier days of Roblox. We need something like that again. All these new games, simulators, or otherwise lazy cash grabs are seemingly all we get nowadays. What was really so good about Lolaris's games was the realness, the honesty that each one had. Did they have their flaws? Oh, of course they did. Overpriced game passes and a lack of firewalls led to the original Mad Murder being shut down. But if we could just get another game by Lolaris, it might point Roblox in the right direction. To show that simulators aren't the only viable option for most developers, and to show that real games can be made again. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.